In this video, I'm interviewing the fabulous Joanne Lee, a gifted life coach and wellness consultant, amongst other things, who shares some great information and tips around how to recognise and manage stress, especially during lockdown with young children at home. Hello, my name is Melanie Appleyard. I'm a teacher and enabler who facilitates social, emotional and spiritual transformation in adults and children who desire to feel happier, more confident and more connected. Today we've got with us the lovely Joanne Lee. Thank you for joining us, Joanne. Hello. So, Joanne is the owner of the Full Spectrum Centre, which is an award-winning centre for education, training development, holistic health and wellness. She's a gifted life coach. Um, she's a wellness consultant, a therapist, a tutor, a Reiki master teacher and an artist too. I've known Joanne for about three years now, and I consider her to be a very good friend as well as a gifted mentor. So Joanne's kindly offered to talk to you today about how you can manage stress during lockdown with young children at home. So Joanne, that is quite a list of skills you've got there. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into the business of wellbeing? Yeah, well, it's lovely to be here. And uh, yes, uh, I've been in the business of wellbeing for 20 years this year, so although it's a long list, they, they were all achieved over a very long period of time. Um, so I'm Joanne, and yes, I own uh, the Full Spectrum Centre, and I'm also um, a life coach. I have a private coaching practice and uh, an art studio where we do mindful art classes and crafts classes, and, and I use it as my own studio as well when I can get in there, because obviously the lockdown at the minute, so everything's shut up. Um, oh, I'm really missing that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of cabin fever setting in, but, oh. but I look, I'm lucky I have tools that I could use to, to manage my stress. But uh, just like everybody else, this is an unprecedented situation that we're in. So even the likes of myself and yourself and, and other colleagues that are coaches and therapists, we're all struggling with the same thing. We're all in the same boat in the same sea at the moment, just trying yeah. to paddle away, aren't we? So. I know. But yeah, so let me take you back to the beginning. Um, I'm 50 next week, so I've been around for a while. Uh, but I began life uh, in quite a traumatic uh, setting, so I went through quite a bit of trauma as a child. I was bullied at school. Um, I struggled with chronic illness for most of my life and um, really began just being a people pleaser and fitting in with what people wanted me to be. So for a long time, I was a wife. Um, I was a manager at work in my job as an optician and trying to manage all the stress that I was under um, and then I found Reiki that was really how I got into to the wellness business I had a, a Reiki session with a friend and, a, and it kind of really helped my symptoms that I'd been struggling with for such a long time that doctors weren't able to help me with and I was like okay I need to know how this is done <laughs> Uh, I do it for myself so I started with the Reiki and then the massage and the bodywork followed very quickly my life coaching was a, a godsend I originally did that for my own benefit for my own personal development and then uh, I kind of incorporated it with my bodywork and, and my healing um, and just continue to learn really um, so yeah that, that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years <laughs> Yeah. Ironically, it was um, Reiki that got me into the holistic side of things as well as the um, emotional well-being side of things. So, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, a great tool. OK, so stress is a word we're only too familiar with these days. OK, would you like to talk a little bit about what stress might look like and why it's so important to manage it? Yeah, so... Stress is such a, a small word when you write it down, but it incorporates such a big topic of things. And stress is different for different people. So some people will say they're stressed when they're really not. <laughs> you don't even know what the word means. And yeah. then other people will tell you, oh, I'm not stressed, but actually their body is screaming it. I can see it in their body language. Um, so everybody reacts differently to, to different things that are going on as well. What's stressful for me might not be stressful for you. It might be really big things that cause you stress, or it might be really little things that tip you over the edge and um, we all need a little bit of stress actually it's not 
not it's not a bad thing per se if we didn't have a little bit of stress in our lives we'd just end up sitting around watching daytime tv all day we wouldn't get anything done uh, mm-hmm. so it, it's a good way it's a good thing in a way to get us motivated but when we're under constant stress because uh, of chronic stress and it builds and it builds and it builds it can lead to burnout uh, and breakdown and, and and serious health conditions physical and mental and emotional so it's something that we really do need to take seriously and keep a check of and in terms of the signs and symptoms that will vary greatly for again different people um, and it's really about you knowing your own body and mind so what suddenly comes in that you you think that's not me normally that's not mine where's that come from it's always being very aware and mindful of your own body um, and I learned that quite early on with my chronic illness it was one of it was my my consultant that said to me Joanne you know your own body much better than any doctor does so whenever you get a symptom that doesn't feel right that you know is not because I used to, to have kind of new symptoms popping up and I'd go along to the GP and he'd just say to me, oh yeah, it's part of your polycystic ovary syndrome. And I was like, mm, don't think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so you just need to be really mindful of, of what could be stress or what could be something else. Because the problem with stress symptoms, signs and symptoms, is they mimic other conditions. So yeah. it, it might be stress, but it might not. It might be a genuine medical condition that you've got. So it's just being mindful. Um, but some of the, the, there are a lot of commonalities. So being grumpy, um, if that's not in your normal nature and you suddenly find yourself just snapping at people, if you're getting irritable, even to a point of aggressive, if that's not your normal nature, then that's a little red flag to go, hang on a minute, why am I getting like this? Yeah. Um, being impatient, not having a lot of time for, for things and getting frustrated and wound up really easily. Um, becoming overburdened, just feeling like the weight of the world is on top of your shoulders and, and having a sense of dread. You don't really know what it is that you, you're dreading, but you can just feel it. Um, mm. Negative thinking is a big one. So, and, and the problem with negative thinking is once you're in that negative thought pattern, it's easy to stay there. It's much harder to get out of it, like attracts like, I tell my clients this all the time. So it's really mm. important that you try hard Uh, to get out of that it's okay to feel negative and to acknowledge those thoughts and feelings but don't stay there with it try and flip it being nervous being fearful and afraid a lot of the time having a cluttered mind and your mind racing so that you can't Mm. really process your thoughts is a common one not being able to switch off um, and I'm guilty of this. Uh, my clients and my friends know me as a bit of a workaholic because I kind of don't keep going and keep going and I can't switch off. So I'm trying to really work on that. And <laughs> that's the benefit of the lockdown, actually. There has been a lot of negatives for a lot of people and it's caused a lot of stress. But actually, when you kind of flip it, it's given us opportunities that we wouldn't have normally had. And it, particularly for me, it's given me an opportunity to kind of re look at my life and look at my lifestyle and, and try and implement a lot more of the tools that I, I should be implementing as I teach it and I use it. Um, mm. You might also have, um, if you were a good sense of humour before, you might suddenly lose your sense of humour. So things that would have been funny before then actually wind you up and you get stressed about. Um, just being unable to enjoy things that you would have done normally, um, pretty stressed, Uh, being depressed and sad, but not knowing why you're feeling like that. So no obvious reason, Um, just being worried. And then there are physical signs and symptoms. So biting your nails, picking at your skin, playing with your hair, so sort of kind of nervous twitches. Yeah. Overeating or not eating enough, so not eating, not looking after yourself really, just having a, just a complete lack of regard for your own health and well-being. Um, smoking more if you're a smoker, drinking more alcohol if you drink alcohol, or if you suddenly start drinking alcohol or smoking and you didn't before. Um, those, those are quite usual uh, things for people. Being restless, uh, particularly at night, so restless leg syndrome is a, a common one poor quality sleep um, mm. sore eyes or, or your eyesight can be affected even um and 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 insomnia was a big one for me so problems with getting to sleep staying asleep having nightmares um migraines a big one for me headaches and mm. grinding your teeth that 
one of the big ones. I see that a lot in clients. I do when I'm doing my body work. I, a lot of the time, I'm working around here because people are either grinding their teeth or they're clenching the jaw at night. And sometimes during the day, we don't know we're doing it. It yeah. kind of just creeps up on us. By body work, do you mean your massage? Yeah. So yeah. kind of just working around and releasing the tension from the muscles. Um, yeah. And sometimes you don't realise it until you go to the dentist and they'll say to you, oh, you're grinding your teeth at night, because they can see it in your in your teeth, in your jaw. Um, indigestion, heartburn, constipation and uh, irritable bowel. So irritable bowel conditions can be caused by foods and sensitivities, but a big portion of sufferers are, it, it is stress induced. So it can really yeah. have it with your digestion. Because of and course, I think this ease can cause disease. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah and we think that our brain is in charge of our of our bodies and our minds but actually what research recent research shows is actually gut health is is key to determining how healthy you are so it's really important you get good nutrition and that you're eating regularly and keeping your metabolism uh, yeah. working properly Absolutely. Uh, yeah it's a big one um it is yeah, I was going to say that's so such a huge list and such a huge impact that stress can have that, you know, people don't realise that they are stressed because it hits so many people in so many ways. So yeah, they'll, they'll get that little symptom or sign and they'll just think, oh, I've just got a headache, I must be dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah, I've had clients that will come in and say to me, yeah, when I have to go through the consultation and, and headaches is a big one. Do you get yeah. headaches? Yeah. How often do you get them? Every day? Yeah. How long have you been getting them every day? <laughs> it, <is. laughs> it, just, yeah. it becomes their norm, which is really scary that, you know, people aren't seeing okay. that and it's a red flag and, and getting it investigated. So it's really important to be aware. Um, and particularly when we're talking about blood pressure, racing yeah. heart, chest pains, um, it's really important you don't ignore those things. And I don't, I'm not scaremongering, I'm not gonna say you're gonna have a heart attack, but because they mimic, panic attacks mimic heart attack. First time I had a panic attack, I thought I was dying. I thought I was having a heart attack. The first time I had heartburn, I thought I was having a heart attack because you just don't know what it is. So you yeah. just gotta really take anything that's sudden or that's creeping up that, that you don't recognize, don't just brush it aside and, and just presume you know what's causing it get it investigated, start mm. to change your lifestyle because that will keep you healthy. Yeah, absolutely. That's so important. So lockdown has obviously created a lot of stress for so many people. Um, and like you say, a lot of people just think super, super, super men and women and they can just keep going and do everything. And obviously it is causing stress. Um, working from home can be really stressful, but also if you're trying to look after children whilst you're working from home, uh, you're trying to manage the learning while working from home, again, it can cause so much stress. So what advice or tips would you have for these parents who are sort of, well, who are doing all this, you know, to help them manage their stress and well-being? it's really difficult isn't it and it, it's really easy for me to sit here and say yeah you need to do this you need to do that I don't have children so I, I can imagine how difficult it is for parents out there but I do have two furry variety I have two puppy spaniels <laughs> so um, and they're very demanding it's not like I can just put them in a playpen and say entertain yourself <laughs> with constant attention so I can empathize a little bit with parents in that respect my furry friends are like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I often joke with my, my clients that have got kids. I, always, I often say, yeah, I think it's worse than having children because they're just full on 24 hours a day. But well, I wouldn't be without them. Um, no, they've but, grown up now, but you can guarantee I'll be working from home and the, the door will back <laughs> open and one of the dogs will come in. <laughs> Yeah. They just want your attention 24 hours a day, don't they? But, you know, we, we love them anyway. Um, but the first thing I would suggest for anybody that's under stress, but particularly if you're a parent in the middle of lockdown, you're homeschooling or the nursery shut. I've had so many clients that are trying to work from home and have the kids in nursery, but then the nursery's had to, to lock down or they've had to self-isolate and then the kids are suddenly at home and you know, both parents are at home working from home. So that's an added stress because, you know, space is an issue if you're both working from home and then you've got to entertain the kids or homeschool them. It's incredibly difficult. So first thing I would recommend is identify what your stressors are. So a stressor is something 
in your environment, in your world that causes you to become stressed. And they could be little things, they can be massive things, they could be temporary things like losing your job is temporary until you get a new one or a bereavement is temporary because you're going to come out of the other side eventually. And then there are kind of things that are permanent unless you make a big move. So, you know, in that if your environment in your house isn't quite conducive to how you want it, unless you move house, which is on the top 10 list of stressful things to do, it is kind of going to stay the same for a while. So it's identifying what those stresses are and then removing as many of them as you possibly can. And the ones that you can't remove, adapting them in some way or adapting how you are reacting to them or relating mm. to them um, and then moving on from that keeping a stress journal much like if somebody was coming to me with headache and migraines I would ask them or if they have digestive problems I'd ask them to keep a food diary or a headache diary which just lists when you're experiencing that thing what time it was what you've been doing either side of that the food you were eating the same with stress note down when you're getting stressed note down the symptoms note down what was happening at that particular time and most of the time you can see a pattern forming mm, that's a great that's idea better yeah better able to, to manage that stress then and then checking your stress levels so one of the questions I ask my clients when I'm working with stress management is what are your stress levels and I use a scale between one and ten so one is really low very little stress or zero and 10 is really stressed off the scale and really not coping, Joe. And then I asked them to separate home and work because quite often you'll be really stressed at home and work will be your release. So you won't be very stressed at work at all or it'll be the opposite way around or they'll be highly stressed in both or not stressed at all in both. And it's almost better to be highly stressed in both than to have a big gap between because when you've got a big gap between the two, you've no work-life balance at all. So it's really looking at your stress levels. There are loads of stress tests that you can do online. I use a particular questionnaire with my clients, but if you just go to any of the, um, the stress management sites or, or Healthy Minds, anything like that, they will have a particular stress test that you can take. So there'll be a number of questions and then it scores your answers and it will tell you how stressed you are. But a simple scale like one to ten, and just it's, like I said at the beginning, it's about being mindful and recognizing and just stopping for a minute and thinking, is this my normal behavior? Do I normally feel like this? Is this too much? Because quite often we're in automatic pilot and we just keep going and going and going until we hit that brick wall and we can't keep going any longer. Yeah. Um, so once you've done your stress test and you've kept your journal and you've seen a little pattern, you've identified what your stresses are, it's really about making changes so that you can manage those stresses. Because if you can't remove them, you're going to have to do something different. And most of the time that's making positive lifestyle changes. So eating healthily, getting the right nutrition, eating at the right time so it keeps you going. Food is our fuel. Uh, keeping hydrated, dehydration can lead to a lot of stress symptoms. Um, as I said before, sleep is really important. So good quality sleep. It's not about the amount of hours you get. And this is another key aspect of stress management, taking pressure off yourself. We live in a society outside of the pandemic and lockdown. We live in a society where we're constantly comparing ourselves with other people. For parents, it'll be as simple as, what does fellow mum outside the school gates, how does she parent her child? Oh my gosh, I don't do that. I must be a bad parent. We're constantly comparing ourselves to other people, to celebrities. It, it happens all of the time. And even in pandemic, it's even worse because we're comparing what other people are doing to manage in the pandemic. I want you to stop that. Just stop. You're not comparing yourself to anybody else. You have to do the best you can do with what you have in that moment. Doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. So in terms of sleep, yes, the guidelines will tell you, you know, you go on the NHS website, it will say get eight hours of sleep. Not everybody needs eight hours of sleep. Some people only need six. So find out, again, by keeping a sleep diary, just by looking at your patterns, find out what is healthy for you. What gives you enough sleep that you can cope during the day? Might be four. For me, I've been in an insomniac most of my life and, and up until very recently, I could manage and function on three hours a night. 
for a very long time I did that because I only needed three hours because that three hours I was in deep sleep we go through four four stages of sleep at night and the, and the last stage is the really deep good quality sleep so somebody else could get eight hours but stay in the shallower stages of sleep and not be able to function during the day so it's not about the hours it's about the quality so doing things that will induce good quality sleep and um, talking reaching out even if you know I know I have a lot of clients that are single parents or they they can't have contact with the family at the moment because they're not in the bubble or they don't live locally so if you haven't got a parent that you can call on or a family member or even a friend there are parents and helplines yeah. don't be afraid of reaching out it's it's not a weakness this happens a lot with with fathers with dads with men they, they feel like reaching out for help and talking to somebody is a sign of weakness that's why there are so many mental health problems in in males at the moment it's it's been highlighted on awareness brought to it so don't feel afraid about reaching out for help and admitting that you need that little bit of help talking just talking to somebody is a stress management technique in itself it's just releasing that stuff that you've built up in your mind that you try to ignore just getting it off your chest can help you to feel so much better um cutting out the caffeine seeking advice from your gp so that even if they can't refer you to a service at the moment at least they've noted it on your records um, and, and at least they can monitor you, they can take your blood pressure or get you to take your own blood pressure. And that's really taking your blood pressure is a, is a good sign of, of how well you're doing, how your heart health is. Uh, I know for me at the moment, I, I'm really invested in my smartwatch and I have different apps on my phone because I'm getting to 50. Um, I mean, I'm going through the menopause on top of my, my chronic illness. So I've got to be really aware of my heart health. So, mm. it, and it reminds me, it'll actually tell me your heart's under stress and it'll tell me that it's actually stress that's causing it. I have an app called Welter and it, and it actually tells you, it'll go, Joanne, you need to meditate. Joanne, you need to do some deep breathing. And it just reminds me. So we have all this modern technology at our disposal. Use it. There are lots of free apps Absolutely. like that. Yeah. So really monitoring your, your heart rate, your pulse and your blood pressure. Um, changing your mindset. So when you're struggling with stress and you're in that negative thinking and it's Groundhog Day because yesterday was a bad day and you get up, you're almost preempting it's going to be a bad day before it's even began. So changing your mindset. We know from modern research into the mind-body connection that your body responds to what you tell it and it can't distinguish whether you've imagined something or it's actually happened. So if you're constantly telling yourself you're going to be stressed the kids are going to be playing up you're not going to manage you're going to be late you'll attract that not just in terms of spiritually from the law of attraction but your body mind connection your body will actually give you that and it'll give you that stress so just change your mindset set your intention every day when you wake up you're going to have a good day even if you don't believe it tell yourself set that intention um studies actually show that people handle stress better when they reconsider the situation from a new angle or a different perspective. So that's almost what you've got to do. You've got to change and have a growth mindset. So when you're feeling that negative thought or feeling, yes, recognize it, accept it, and then don't stay there, flip it into the positive. There's always a positive and a negative yeah. in every situation. It's just about finding it. Um, and time management is a massive, <laughs> part of stress management and a massive part of what we're talking about we're talking about people having to manage their jobs in their home and manage their children and all of that is new because that's not normally how we have to cope and actually there's a really interesting study that was done um in scandinavia and it was on time management and particularly it was a report done on mothers and they found that mothers are much more burdened by time pressure than fathers are. So the women that were most affected were either highly educated, financially stressed, or they were lacking in social support. So mums take the brunt, research shows us that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've got so much to do as women, we've got, you know, not to be sexist, but it is normally mum that gets the kids up ready for school, gets the, you know, they then forget about their own self-care and, you know, probably haven't washed their hair in a week or, and then they've got the breakfast to do, they've got, and they've got a job as well. 
so it kind of falls normally on, on the women and mm -hmm. it's just so important I hear so if I had a pound for everyone that said to me I don't have time don't have time especially when I'm talking about meditation don't have time to meditate you can always find five minutes in the day to just switch off sit back and just chill out whatever it is that you need to yeah. do to manage that stress Absolutely. There's a couple of things that you've mentioned already there that, um, you know, has got my brain thinking. Um, one of the ones I think was about um, people asking for help if they need it. And certainly with with home learning yeah. and managing that, that's really hard because I know parents, if they're working from home, going back to the comparison as well, they do compare themselves and they think, well, other parents will be making their children do all the work and I've got to do all the work. But if you're a single parent, then straight away, there's, there's one of you trying to manage that. If you're both working from home, you know, and you're trying to manage phone calls and meetings and you've got children, it's going to be difficult. So it's remembering that, you know, you're not a superhero, you can't do everything at once. So it might be, you know, stagger the work that the children do, spend an hour or so with them in the evening to support them where they're needed, but encourage them to be as independent as possible. And remember that you don't have to do it at home. You can talk to the school as well if you're struggling trying to fit it all in with work. Let school know, you know, school, the schools do understand and, you know, they'll, they'll sort of accommodate supporting you as well. You know, a lot of teachers are also parents and they've got the same so Absolutely. <laughs> you don't have to do it alone so don't compare yourself and don't feel you know everything has got to be spot on or you're a bad person it, it doesn't work like that at all and yeah. you know quite often it's it's your outlook and your mindset that's making you see that not everybody else's so yeah, and I guarantee all your friends are all feeling exactly the same thing even if it looks like you know you might be looking at their facebook and it looks like they're having an easy ride and everything's going yeah. to it i'll come to guarantee you it's probably not what yeah. we see on the outside is usually not what's going on you know behind four walls yeah. so yeah that's where the comparison thing comes in just don't do it it's too much pressure on yourself yeah absolutely everybody's doing the best that they can in a given situation you know and you're you're no different so yeah absolutely. Oh, but in and terms of my of time management, I recently came across a book called The 5am Club by Rubin Sharma mm -hmm. and it's about getting up early and, and I, I do quite a few of Bob Proctor's teachings um, as part of my coaching and mm -hmm. he does the same thing. He gets up really early. One of my other mentors, Heidi, she gets up 5am. And when I first started working with them, I was like, 5 a.m., I'm not a morning person. I've never been a morning person. Mm. Um, all my students and clients know me. If they get an email from me at three in the morning, it's probably because I'm awake, because I'm an insomniac. I am awake. <laughs> and I, I kind of feel over the last 20 years, I do my best work in the middle of the night because I'm a night owl. That's just how I'm programmed. But mm. actually, watching them, how, watching how productive they are, watching how less stressed they are because they've been up that, at that time in the morning when nobody else is up. You can do your meditation, you can do your prep, you can even yeah. start work. And you know, if you're on flexi time, if that's your most productive time of the day, then do it then. So I, I haven't got up at five o'clock, I have to say, that's a bit yeah. push for me, but I have started getting up at 6.30, which is unheard of for me. And it makes such a difference. Yeah. It's so yeah. peaceful at that time in the morning because none of the neighbours are up, so I don't hear anyone outside. And it's just a great time to do my meditation and my personal development stuff for me. It's my time. So yeah. you can always find that little bit extra time. If, if you're saying to me, I haven't got time, get up half an hour earlier. Yeah. Do it when the kids have gone to bed. You know, yeah. Put the kids to bed at half an hour earlier and give you, so you've got to give yourself that time to yeah. just do whatever it is that you need to do to manage your stress and that will be different for different people because in one tool you know one size doesn't fit all there are lots of tools in stress management and it's finding the right one for you so it's going through all these things and finding what works for you and sticking with it um another big one is avoiding negative situations i stop watching the news if there's a press conference suddenly boris is going to go on the tv i'll watch it because that's probably something i need to know but 24 hours a day on Sky, the same news story every hour. It's conditioning you to stay in that negative thinking. Absolutely. If you really need to know something, you'll find it out, trust me. <laughs> you know, somebody will tell you. It's really important. 
So, uh, and negative people as well. So, you know, if there's somebody around you or somebody on the telly that you don't, but what the trouble is when life attracts light, like I said before, so when you're in that negative mindset, you'll be drawn to negative people. So you'll be drawn to watching negative people or listening to negative people. So mm. just stop that and surround yourself with people that, I'm not saying you have to think positively all day long because that's unrealistic. We're going to feel negative at times but it's just mm. cutting out as much as you can so that you can focus on flipping that negative into a positive and and just doing techniques so um there are loads of stress management techniques a lot of them are built around mindfulness and meditation and um, things like getting creative doing puzzles relaxation techniques and exercise is a big one uh, and I, that's for me again i've never been a gym buddy i can't be doing going to the gym it's too boring for me and um, but i've recently connected reconnected with my yoga so i love doing that it's just a really peaceful way of moving for me and also dance so i barefoot boogie in the shower in the morning it gets me going it gets me energy going and then i have a little dance routine that i do um in a program online and that again that's been the great thing uh, one of the positives of lockdown is i wouldn't have time to go to the gym because i wouldn't make time to go to a gym because that's not what i want to do with my time and classes would just be too logistical with the dogs and work and clients it just wouldn't work for me mm. but being able to do it from home in my own front room i can do it whenever i want because it's on demand so uh, my yoga classes my yoga teacher is actually in cyprus but because she does it online she does it in the facebook group I don't have to get up at eight in the morning when she's doing it Cyprus time. I can watch it any time of the day and do it then. So mm. it's just looking at how you can reorganize your day and use modern technology, use Zoom calls and Zoom classes, use Facebook classes to fit it in your routine. So you don't physically have to then go out and think, oh, I've got to get somebody to look after kids while I go do my exercise class. You don't need to. Stick them in the other room, you know, doing their painting or whatever they want to do, doing their homework, and you go and do your exercise class. So it's kind of thinking outside the box of how you can work around this situation. Mm. Um, and lastly, I would say, and that one of the big things for me is finding your passion and purpose. So that you're not always people pleasing everybody else and running around and looking after everybody else putting yourself in an important position top of the list really mm. um i always remind my clients what's the first thing they tell you when you get on a flight or on your holidays they do the safety demonstration and they tell you if the masks fall from the ceiling put your own on before you attempt to put your child on why do they tell you that because you can't help your child if you can't breathe yeah. and it's the That's same in life point. If, if, uh, it always surprises me even after 20 years when i say that question to a client tell me the five most important people things places in your life it's always husband wife children the dog the house the job they either don't put themselves on the list or they put themselves bottom of the list and you really need to be putting yourself top of your list because how can you look after husband wife cat dog child right. house job if you're not 100 percent happy and healthy so that's finding that passion and purpose, finding things that you want to do that feed your soul, that make you feel happy, do them. Because the ripple effect then is it's going to make everybody else in the house feel happy and healthy because you're at, at peace. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you just can't do it. If, if you've not got anything left in the battery, anything left to give, then, you know, that's going to impact on everyone anyway. Um, yeah. You know, if you're stressed and your temper's a bit frayed because you're stressed and then that's making other people stressed and their temper's afraid and does it has such a knock on effect. And that brings me on actually into onto my next question, if that's all right. In high stress situations, tempers can become very frayed. Do you have any tips for sort of calming down quickly when tempers do get a bit high? And Yeah, and there's similar techniques that we would use for anxiety. Um, so my number one go-to is the 54321 technique. So there are lots of variations for this technique, but the one that I would use for my clients is when you start to feel that and you feel that red mist come in, just stop breathe okay yeah. and then acknowledge five things that you can see so very quickly in the environment look for five things that you can see then look for four things that you can touch physically then look for three things that you can hear two things that you can smell and one thing that you can taste oh well like what that taste is <laughs> 
<laughs> and the because the way that the mind works is it can't focus on anxiety and anger at the same time that it's focusing on something else so the idea behind this technique is that you stop hitting its tracks and you'll be mindful of what is going on around you and you'll suddenly find that you're not as hot tempered you're not as anxious you're not as angry yeah. so it really just calm you down really quickly so it's just about stopping don't speak before you've stopped and thought about it because when we're in that state everything comes out we just lash out and yeah. then the other person like attracts like so the other person lashes out back because you yeah. just then shared that energy so it's just about stopping deep breathing is is just the best technique for that it's at the fundamental basis of every relaxation and every stress management technique is focus on your breathing most of us shallow breathe we don't breathe properly so we don't get enough oxygen into our bodies that affects yeah. our mind um, and it constricts all our organs which then makes us even more stressed and tense so really it's just stopping breathing again use modern technology i've got a little app on my phone and my, my watch that's called breathe and every so often it'll make a nice little dingy noise and a little petal flower a petal flower will come up on the screen and i have to breathe in and out as the the flower shrinks and grows oh, so it makes me breathe with it yeah i, I shouldn't need a reminder because i teach my <laughs> mother meditation but my mum was a nurse all life and she always used to say to me doctors and nurses make the worst patients they don't follow <laughs> their own advice and therapists and coaches are probably the same i think the same for everyone use them. Um, yeah both yeah. and we had a faulty plug in the house for a long time <laughs> yeah so I, I i love using modern technology like you know first of all lockdown and i'm still a bit reluctant to do my classes online because i like especially when i'm teaching um spiritual development and meditation i like to be in the room and have that energy and it's, it's not quite the same on zoom but you know i am starting to embrace it because that's been nearly a year now that we've not been able to yeah, yeah. work normally so we're having to embrace it so use it, you know, use all these little apps. They, they do help. They just, they just even if you just set a reminder on your phone or a little voice note to say, you've not took five minutes yet today, but plan your day out as much as you can. Plan your day out, have a diary, schedule time for yourself. You schedule it for everybody else. And, and that really speaks about how you value yourself, about your self-esteem, your self-confidence. Because if you don't value yourself, Mm. how do you expect other people to value you you've got yeah. to put a value on yourself you've got to start looking after yourself so yeah, yeah and then comes down boundaries as well doesn't it really and having those boundaries learning play. to say no that's yeah. what a lot of stress comes from is we don't want to say no to people so we just go yeah i'll do that yeah i'll do that yeah i'll do that yeah i'll take you there yeah 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 and then we, yeah. right now we've got no time left for us because we've said yes to everybody else but we've said no to us yeah so yeah yeah but if you're in that sudden red mist anxious state stop breathe do your technique fantastic and that's something that you can teach to your children as well you know um it, it's a great technique to get them into because yeah. they need to self-regulate as well and they need help to self-regulate yeah so. and then that the ripple effect of that so you can use that actually as your own stress management technique if you're stressed sometimes it's because the kids are stressed and you're picking up on that stress yeah if you teach them to relax you're not going to be as stressed because they're not going to be stressing you out it's not going to be one of your stressors yeah absolutely so I know you've been doing Facebook uh, meditations weekly for a while now and um, since the beginning of lockdown last year, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I've, I've been on a few of them and recently you started to publish them on YouTube too. So, you know, if anybody wants to check out the meditations, you will be able to, to find them on YouTube or Joanne's page, which we'll share with you in the group um can you talk to us a little bit about the benefits of meditation and how they have personally helped you yeah so i have been meditating for a very long time i've been teaching it officially in classes for about 14 years and unfortunately for the last year we haven't been able to do classes at all um but for me personally not just professionally it's something that i use on a regular basis i meditate at least three or four times a day and make myself take that time to just be in the quiet and i'll do different types of meditations depending on how i'm feeling they all begin with the breath they all begin with with 
the correct breathing. Um, a lot of my Reiki techniques are based on Eastern Reiki, so they're based on spiritual uh, techniques, Jap original Japanese techniques, and they're all med meditation based. So it's a big part of my life. It's a big part of my own stress management plan. And it's something that I would I, I normally recommend to clients as well. The reasons why is for all the reasons we've said why we should manage our stress. Meditation helps you to relax. It helps you to be in the moment. It helps you to be grounded. When we're not grounded, we do get irritable. We do get stressed really easily. We can't focus. So the benefits of meditation is it trains your mind to be more alert, to be more calm, to have more clarity. It lowers your blood pressure. So if my little watch beeps and goes, oh, your heart rate's 94, I go, all right, I'm going to do a bit of meditation now. I'm going to do a bit of deep breathing. And the amazing thing is, I know this, I teach it, but to see how quickly that heart rate actually goes down, you know, we read it in books, it, yeah, it lowers your heart rate, it lowers your blood pressure, but to actually see it happening right in front of your eyes, and it happens really quickly. Mm. If I am a bit worried about my heart rate and I take the biggest deep breath in, it drops by about 20, just been taking one deep breath in. So I can't stress how important that is. Um, so yeah, it just generally will have all of the benefits of, of stress management techniques. It's the most wonderful tool ever. Everyone I always say, if everyone did five minutes of meditation a day, you don't have to, the problem is a lot of people are scared by meditation because they think you have to sit in a lotus position for an hour and not move and not think about anything. And that's the furthest thing from what meditation is. There are lots of different ways. You can walk, do a walking meditation, you know, go for a walk. I set the dogs out if I'm just wandering around the park in my own little world. That's being mindful of what I'm doing. It's meditating. You don't have to sit with your eyes closed thinking of nothing. I guarantee you, if you try and think of nothing, you'll think of something because that's what your brain yeah. is to <laughs> so yeah. take the pressure off yourself just you know sit with a crystal if you like crystals sit with a crystal look at a candle flame obviously you know health and safety make sure it's not going to set yeah. fire to your house but it, there's lots mindful coloring that's why i love my art so much um because that's just one way of just being mindful and chilling out just blocking out the world for a bit and just recentering yourself and gathering your thoughts uh, it's a great technique yeah, which that brings me on to my next question in a minute. But first of all, I just wanted to mention that those benefits of meditation, again, are so beneficial for children. Uh, it's something that I teach um, children. I've got a meditation course for children and I've used it in school. And some of the children, the things that they fed back, they said, well, it helps me concentrate in class. I don't feel angry when I'm going in class. You know, I feel calmer and you can physically see them calmer and it helps them focus. And like you say, it's not about stopping your thoughts. You can't stop your thoughts, but you can train yourself to become more aware of them, which helps you become more aware of when you're feeling stressed and what you need to do about it, as you said. So there are so, so many benefits from, from meditation, uh, you know, and learning that from a young age as well. So uh, you've touched on the fact that you are an artist and, um, you know, art is a really nice stress relieving activity in itself. So where do you think creative arts in general not just art but creative arts in general fit into stress relief and how do they help for me personally it's a big part of it you know i love nothing more than not just um drawing and painting and coloring but actually i have um a, a whole set of crystal beads genuine crystals that are, that are drilled for beads I love nothing more than just sitting and reorganising them into different types, different colours. And I can sit for hours just putting them in different pots. In fact, my ex-husband used to say, I get my beads out and he goes, what are you doing? I'm like, just repotting my beads. I'm like, why? So I'm already doing them. Like, because it's chilling me out. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it's just a, another type of mindfulness and, and meditation technique. So yeah, I love nothing more than just sorting through my beads. Um, but my, you know, mindful colouring, painting, my, um, my, my favourite one at the moment is my fluid art. So that is where you just get a load of acrylic paints with a little bit of uh, mixer to, to make it flow, to make it a little bit thinner. And you can just pour the paint onto the canvas and then you just twist the canvas around and the paints will just merge into each other. That is so therapeutic. Oh, yeah, I can imagine just watching that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine it's that same with clay as well, because you just sort of, the, the feeling, it's the sensory thing you get from that, isn't it? Absolutely. And you can do it with your kids. Yeah. 
it's a great thing. That's a great stress management tool for you right there. Get the kids involved in it. Because once you've poured that paint, and you can pour straight from a cup, or you can get little sink, uh, the covers with the different holes in, pour it through the holes. There's so many different things you can do with fluid art. And it is just like, get an experimental. Don't worry about it looking perfect. Just chuck the paint on move the cameras around and and it will even when you've stopped moving the cameras and you settle it the paints will still merge with each other they'll still be moving so you could leave it at night and then get up the next day and it looks different again because the paints moved as it's dried the kids love it so, yeah and it's yeah, just away from that stress and you've got to do your work and i've got to do mine it's yeah. a time when you can just come together and just have fun together which That's is what it's a about huge stress relief isn't it yeah. yeah in itself and it builds the relationships instead of breaking them down through through thought reactions absolutely yeah. So yeah. yeah, and for me personally, but professionally, obviously with the, the mindful art classes, when we can get back in the studio, um, I think that's becoming more popular. You know, you, we see mindful colouring now, adult colouring is much more popular in the last two years, even, especially mm. in the pandemic, because we haven't got a lot else we could do. We're not allowed to go out. So, you know, the, the industry itself in, in selling colouring books has, has grown exponentially because more people are taking that up as a hobby and as a mindfulness and meditation techniques so yeah it's going to be a big mm -hmm. thing and it and it gets you know in terms of inner child work how many of us when we're really stressed actually take time to connect with our inner child and just become that child again for a few minutes mm -hmm. that's the stress management technique in itself mm -hmm. having fun laughing laughter is the best medicine so yeah just have fun mm -hmm. get creative it's funny actually because with the mindful coloring sometimes um like i find i like the coloring but I think our minds can be so busy with our thoughts sometimes that I find if I sit down and I'm just colouring in, I'm still getting lots of thoughts. So I find that's a nice time to just listen to an audio book as well. And yeah. then you can really, you know, you can tune into your audio book and your hands are doing something as well. And again, it's just another way of switching off from everything else. And, you know. and this is where I said one size doesn't fit all. So my yeah. coloring won't work for everybody so for my anxiety clients yeah. they won't use that technique at all because that triggers them having to pick the right color what which yeah, box yeah. am i going to use that color for they spend so much time getting anxious about the task itself that that's not the right kind of, of technique for them so it is yeah. about finding what works for you and then staying yeah. with that and using it yeah absolutely so what would you say has had the biggest impact for you personally in terms of stress relief Definitely mindfulness and meditation, you wouldn't be without it. Um, and I think probably the mindset stuff, just being yeah. able to flick that that negative into a positive. Um, yeah. and, and the sleep is very attached to that because obviously when we're tired and we're drained, it's it's harder to flick that switch and change mm -hmm. that, that negative into a positive. So I think those would be my biggest. Yeah. And um just i just want to give everybody who's watching an opportunity to ask any questions if they want to i am watching the um stream in the group as well so uh, we've got quite a few people joined us today which is absolutely lovely to see them. so if anybody has any questions that you want to ask joanne do post them in the group and we'll share them shortly um but just while we're waiting for that would you mind sharing with um with us how people could find you to work with you further should they feel drawn to Absolutely. And what sort of things that you're offering? <laughs> so if you want to work with me on stress management and coaching, then I have a private coaching practice. You can find me on my uh, website, which is joannelee.coach. Um, and you can book an appointment there. You can book a 30 minute free session to just have a discovery call with me to see how I can help you. Um, you can work with me on a one to one basis, uh, on a group coaching class, or just on an online co course where you've got me as, as supporting you in terms of video content uh, and written content. Uh, body work and classes, uh, and a sort of massage and reflexology and the holistic side of it, you can go to the Full Spectrum Centre uh, Limited, and that's where you will find a Full Spectrum facebook community group that's where you'll find the meditations and on our youtube there will be meditations coming from my coaching side as well with a different emphasis uh, and if you're interested in the mindful art uh, or if you want any commissioned artwork then that is elements of creativity limited okay so you can, you can find me on very busy with all these things <laughs> got going i have shared a link to joanne's website and her facebook group 
um, in the comment section. So um, you can always go and find her there as well. But um, there don't seem to be any questions in the group from what I can see. So um, is there anything else that you want to add that maybe I've not asked? Pretty much covered everything. You've covered a lot there. That's been yeah, absolutely amazing, Joanne. Thank you. Just being self-aware. Just mm. really being self-aware and also remembering that everything is temporary. So I know it's been nearly a year, but it is temporary. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We will come out of the pandemic. It will just become like seasonal flu. So you yeah. will be able to see families again. You will go back into the office. The kids will go back to school. It's just temporary. So you've just got to find what works for you to get you through this next few weeks, few months, and then you can learn a new way of living so you can be less stressed going forward. Absolutely. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time today, Joanne. That's been absolutely amazing. And there's just so, so many great tips there for people to you know, to take in mind, they know what to look for in terms of stress. You've told people lots of tips for managing stress. There's lots of tips there for supporting the children as well in terms of stress and, you know, keeping tensions low and everything. And it's just been an absolutely amazing interview and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that you could join us today. So thank oh, you thank very you much. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very honoured. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, well, thank you for all that you do. Um, oh. Your llama course is amazing. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. So, I'm just going to stop the live stream now. Oh, hang on. Um, Anne a just posted, uh, not a question, but Anne's just posted. She said it's been very enlightening. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Anne. <laughs> so, that's lovely. Um, Sarah posted earlier. Um, she was really resonating with what you were saying earlier. And she said she so relates to it and she's a real teeth grinder. Um, Let's have a look and we're getting some lights. Louise is with us, Louise Wynn Stanley. Um, for anybody who's watching, Louise Wynn Stanley is going to be joining us next week for an interview. Yes. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And she's got lots of tips for um, supporting with home learning and helping with the, with the children's side a bit more. Um, Susan Phillips has been watching us, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. And, you know, it's just been a brilliant day. So for everybody who's watching on the live stream, I am going to stop the live stream now. So thank you all very much for watching. And I'm noticing while I'm talking, I'm looking down at my phone on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. And you know, join us again next week at the same time, four o'clock. Thank you.